All right. So as she kind of uh, descends from the area with the the rocks and grenades exploding, etc., she uh, kind of starts to make a, a beeline, um, kind of looking both ways, knowing that she's really exposing herself. And uh, Titus, t- turning his attention from the Rodian and the grenade, immediately whips around, uh, you know, aiming the rifle. Uh, quickly and uh, with uh, surprising finesse given um, you know his, his armor um, and lines up the, the perfect shot in motion that just blasts her right in the back Howdy friends Craig here we've got our third session of our Edge of Empire campaign This is a fistful of credits. We've got five patrons playing. Here you get a chance to see a firefight in a canyon on Ryloth. Uh, I think one of the highlights of the episode is the fact that we really get a sense of how the narrative dice work in FFG's Star Wars system. By design, the dice favor succeeding with a problem. Uh, We call those problems threats on the dice or failing with advantages. So essentially, the fun is watching everyone fail forward or even succeeding with complications. And uh, you can get a sense that uh, the players are really starting to get a handle on it. You'll also see me start to transition the descriptions of what's happening to the players. Uh, This is a style of jamming called shared descriptions. Uh, It's got other names as well, and I really enjoy it. It gives the players a chance to help paint the picture and create the world and uh, set the scene. It takes some of the load off of the GM, me, uh, from really, you know, creating everything. Um, For those of you that are interested, I've linked a great video on the dice system in the show notes. Now, when this is released, we've already recorded session 11. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy session three, knowing that there's a ton of adventure still to come. Honestly, you're not going to believe the path that this crew ends up taking uh, and the trouble that they get themselves into. Now, I am running another group of patrons through uh, a Star Wars RPG uh, campaign. Uh, You can watch their adventures on our Twitch and our YouTube channel. Uh, That crew is in the same universe as this crew, and it's all happening around the same time. So very soon you'll start hearing some common NPC characters pop up in both games. And uh, who knows, maybe there's an Infinity style uh, (laughs) team up and uh, ultimate uh, session coming. So sit back and enjoy a tale from the Star Wars universe. This is a fistful of credits. Enjoy. Playing a tabletop strategy game allows you to unplug and test your skills against friends. Every week, Third Floor Wars delivers useful strategies, discussions, battle reports, and reviews to tabletop games like Malifaux. If you want to get better at the games you already play, or discover the games other people are playing, you are in the right place. Craig and Ray welcome you to the third floor and the Tabletop Talk broadcast. Previously on Fistful of Credits, the crew left Nosh at all with a Twi'lek promising treasure hidden in an abandoned hut palace along the dead road in long forgotten hut space. On Ryloth, they were promised someone would be able to help them chart their way to the palace. The navigator is in a spice mine, so they head out in speeders and swoop bikes to the distant location. As always, things don't go as planned. Will the crew reach the mine? Can they trust each other if things get complicated? Find out in today's episode, episode three of A Fistful of Credits. So here we are with session three. Um, So a couple things before we get started. One, I need to go ahead and open up and let's do a destiny pool. So give me just one second and I will get that started. And the destiny pool is going to give us a sense of light versus dark. You can, are are under your dice pool. There we go. So we've got Titus. All right. Okay. (laughs) Is that everybody? 
That is everybody. So final results are seven light side points, zero dark side points. Um, so things are favoring you guys right out of the gate. Uh, the next thing uh, to quickly cover is obligation. So uh, poor DT got his obligation of his oath rolled again. So we've already taken you, DT, down to, uh, let's see, uh, a 10 strain uh, top threshold. So quick recap. Um, we are now, again, in our third session. So in the first session, you guys all came together on Mashuta, which is uh, the um, smuggler's moon. And the, most, the common denominator between all of you is Larbeck. Uh, Twi'lek um, uh, underboss in the uh, Black Sun. You guys all met at a bar uh, called the Orange Lady on Mashuta, and there you were approached by a Twi'lek by the name of Jacek. And Jacek uh, was interested in um, potentially hiring you and was pulled away quickly uh, by another group of bounty hunters slash smugglers that uh, also wanted to take advantage of what potentially Jacek was offering. You guys had a bit of a scruff up with them and uh, were able to beat them quite handily. And then uh, you were notified that the authorities on Mashuta had been called, so you quickly ran away, which is a, probably a smart move. Uh, and the six of you, the five of you plus Jacek, headed uh, to the ship that's on loan uh, to Marshal Sill from Larbeck. And uh, Jacek said, we need to head to um, uh, Ryloth. Now, ultimately, what he told you is he has a beeline or an inside line on potentially a, a long abandoned hut palace, which could be full of all kinds of treasure. But in order to kind of get the final pieces together on how to get there, he needed to talk to somebody who is on Ryloth. So you guys headed to Ryloth, which is the home planet of the uh, Twi'leks. It's an arid planet. Um, has several different uh, settlements and cities all over the place, but where he told you to go to and where you ended up landing uh, was a small settlement called Nabat. And once there, you encountered um, and found that the contact that you needed to meet in order for uh, JSEC to kind of finish out his navigation things, um, his, uh, this contact, Saskion, is actually in a nearby mine. Um, so he, they called it the new mean mine and they loaned you guys two speeders and two bikes. You guys hopped onto the speeders. You guys hopped into the bikes. The six of you then started traveling across the arid plains of Ryloth towards this new mean, um, mining colony. Where we ended up is you had just kind of entered into more of a canyon, um, as the final stretch to get to this area. But what I'd like to do is, we've, a lot has happened in game time in the last 24 hours or so game time. And I want to kind of get an idea um, kind of where everybody is right now. So let's start off with, uh, uh, with our Mandalorian. So Titus, you, um, you're on a uh, swoop bike. You got, you're flying along an, uh, a feet or so off of the ground. The dust is flying past you, um, and the sands of Ryloth are flying past you. You're about to enter into this canyon. You've got a little bit of time uh, for some thoughts. So what's going through your mind right now? All right, so Titus is, uh, as he's kind of uh, driving the bike, uh, it's starting to think to himself, how the hell did I get here? Uh, this all seems to have gone pretty quickly, and I've not even found out about uh, true payment other than um, the the what he thinks that right now may be just the delusions of a old Twi'lek uh, scholar. Um, especially wondering with this kind of motley crew, um, just how are we how are we supposed to actually um, make any kind of profit from this endeavor? It just seems uh, seems like it's not going to go well. But he is kind of curious. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's just he's he's very conf he's he's not confused. He's he's resolved, but he's just you know trying to make sense of okay, you know, Marshall and I have been traveling together. There's a little bit of a, a you know a bond there right now, um, or at least a, a small modicum of trust. But the rest of these um, the rest of this crew just seems uh, very strange, and he's wondering why. Um, why we were all chosen to to do this job together 
and is somewhat suspicious of that. Not necessarily of the other members, but just suspicious of the situation. So a- along with Titus, we have another person, um, another being, I should say, on a swoop bike. Um, so DT, who is a uh, recommissioned droid back from the Clone Wars. DT, you, um, you know, you're on that swoop bike and you, you have taken in a lot of information. Um, and a lot has been happening over the last 24 hours game time. So what's running through DT's mind as, as you go across the uh, arid plains of Ryloth? So on one level, DT is very much, you know, making sure that like his, his blaster is ready and he's got his head on a swivel, just keeping a lookout, not running into stuff. Uh, but that's, that's surface level. Uh, his, his deeper subroutine processors are, are doing that thing that, uh, truly autonomous, uh, sentient droids eventually, I think, all start doing of, what separates me from a spanner? At what point does a bucket of bolts become a being? Does it matter on processing power? Is the ship, does, does the ship have thoughts like I do? Uh, mm-hmm. kind of a thing. And then really with especially, uh, his, his oath to, uh, droid rights, uh, hanging over his head so much as it is right now, uh, he's really starting to try and figure out like what he wants to do to help that. And, and ultimately he keeps running back into the, the wall of I'm limited by what my current job is until I get out from under Larbeck. So then he starts going into math of, well, how much can we expect to make off of this job? Can I buy myself out with this one big job? And highly doubtful, the arithmetic does not add up there. Um, so yeah, he, he's he's running in circles a bit. Yeah, I would imagine too for DT. I mean, this is this is a, a true rebirth, right? Because before you were part of a gaggle of droids, right? You were part of a battalion of droids that were programmed to do specific things. Now Larbeck has brought you back with the help of Chal and said, you know, you're a little bit more autonomous than you ever have been. So even though, you know, you do owe Larbeck for who you are and being back where you are, it's got to be um, pretty daunting, uh, I would think, for DT to have probably more freedom than he's ever imagined. Very much so. He And, and on top of that, the the battalion, the, the squad he used to work with ran like, you know, hot knife through butter they were they ran together these guys are he, he doesn't know the the operating specs of everybody around him at the moment uh and that's and no one's telling him but all that still kind of feeds back into i wonder how much i was missing in my old memories before i had the extra autonomous processing power consciousness i have now uh because even thinking back it's like it, it's clear but it's computerized it's here's the data run it now it's oh i have doubts and i'm not sure if all the data i'm getting is is correct and some of it's coming from in me so along with these two speeder bikes we've got titus on one uh swoop bike flying um accompanying this group we've got dt on the other swoop bike also headed through Um, But we've also got two speeders, and each of the speeders we've got um, a a driver and a passenger. And driving one of the speeders is Chal, uh, our Rodian technician. So, Chal, you're sitting with the marshal, um, and a lot has happened with you over the last 24 hours or so. What is topmost in your mind? So, it's it's pretty straightforward. There's I found an interesting companion in Detroit, because I'm always interested in Detroit's. And I'm back in quite known place named Ryloth. I I had a few jobs here, so I know it more around more the urban area. So I have no idea why we are going through this valley. And I'm hoping to get some rail on the way and uh, maybe, you know, get some of that sweet medicine on the way. <laughs> so, yep, that's, that's basically it. So, and, and the other speeder, we've got Rix, and Rix is um, uh, driving the speeder, and with him is Jacek, who is our sixth 
um, person, the person who's making some promises about some riches that are available to it. And Ricks, you you might be arguably the person that roped us into this, right? Because uh, the reason that uh, Jacek tracked you down is because of how well you know um, the galaxies and your astronavigational skills and abilities to find things that are hard to find, um, pathways and planets that other people have difficulties. Um, so wh- where's Ricks's mind right now? Man, Ricks is uh, really trying to figure out what these uh, new guys uh, are, are doing and if they're competent and capable of doing what it, what it uh, takes out there in the, in the, in the real world. Um, you know, uh, staying close to uh, uh, JSIC, um, making sure that uh, 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 I'm, I'm protecting and making sure, kind of keeping him shielded uh, uh, from the rest just in case, because I don't really know these guys just yet. Um, we had a pretty wild encounter uh, right out the gate and um, really just making sure I'm, I'm uh, uh, being aware of everybody uh, as, as we're going through this. Um, also, uh, uh, looking at uh, the possibility of being tied to uh, uh, a, a, a find of a bunch of relics and, and uh, historical artifacts, um, uh, getting some notoriety from that um is uh kind of putting a gleam in my eye so yeah and with your academic background this is definitely a little bit more your wheelhouse right these are things that um that you may not have necessarily participated in directly but you have been hired in the past to help track down lost relics and things like that um so i think of anybody um of the five of you um this is more familiar a path um than maybe anybody else so Last but not least, in the other speeder, um, as a as Chol is driving this speeder and the sand is uh, flying by, and you start to move into this canyon, we've got the marshal uh, sitting passenger side. W- what is running through the marshal's head? I am a long, long way from home. I am uh, getting to know my companions and uh, trying to understand this, but uh, but these folks seem more like the guys on the other side of the table than. Uh, than the people I'm used to uh, working with, um, we we may be in over our heads with uh, Larbic. That may have been the deal with the devil, um, but uh, we've got to get through this. Get through one thing at a time. So that's that's where he's at. Howdy friend, Craig here. Is this episode making you realize you need to buy some models? Gadzooks Gaming is my favorite online retailer because of their large selection, killer prices, and great customer service. Don't you hate buying an entire crew box when you only need one model? Gadzooks sells crew box models individually and saves you a ton of money. They even have free shipping to the US and Canada if you spend $100 or more. Swing by gadzoopsgaming.com and make sure you tell them Craig from the third floor sent you. All the details are in the show notes. Great. So now that we have a sense as you guys are going into this canyon... Um, To the left and to the right, instead of just looking out and seeing the entire um, horizon of Ryloth, um, which again is just this um, grayish sand, um, arid planet, you now have gotten far more enclosed. And as you go into this canyon, the canyon itself is roughly about 200, maybe 250 yards wide. Um, As you guys, uh, well, first of all, um, I would imagine the swoop bikes are kind of leading um, things a little bit. Um, Titus and DT, are you guys uh, going into the center of the canyon? Or are you going to try to kind of hug either side of it? Is there any type of strategy as you guys move into the canyon, knowing that hopefully on the other side of this canyon, you're going to be much closer to this new mean mine? I would say that uh, we probably are um, flanking to protect um, either flanking or one of us taking the, the front and the other taking the rear to protect the two um, speeders kind of be able to to quickly uh navigate or maneuver to where we need to to get to in case there's trouble yeah i would add to that probably one on either side of the canyon so we can see up 
to the other side of the canyon a bit better in case anybody's coming from above. Excellent. So let's do this. Let's say that the speeders um, are hugging more to the left, right? So they're staying more to the left on this canyon. Um, who's going to be kind of there? Which of the two bikes are going to be there with the speeders? I'll take point. Okay. Uh, so put put me up first. I'll do more scouting. I'm, again, DT is, is thinking about he knows his own specs. He doesn't really know everybody else's specs, other than the Mandalorian doesn't trust him and thinks he's deadly. <laughs> All right. So off to the off to the left of the canyon. Knows, we've got the knows he's deadly. <laughs> doesn't sure, think, right? Sure, You keep thinking that. <laughs> so off to the left, as you guys are kind of hugging the left side of this canyon, um, the canyon bed itself that you guys are traveling through is relatively featureless. Um, you are taking taking some time and effort to make sure that you're close to the left-hand side of the canyon, but not too close because it is winding. You can only see at any point in time, maybe 150 yards ahead of you, and then the canyon winds and turns as you guys are traveling through it. And then off to the far right of everybody, we have Titus. Titus is hugging the right side of this canyon to make sure that he's able to see up above the top of the canyon from that side. So really, you guys are in a situation where between... Um, between the five of you, you're able to really get a sense of what's in front of you, obviously what's behind you at any point in time, and now you can not only see the left and the right of the base of the canyon, but you're having no difficulty seeing the tops, um, or at least anything that would be immediately at the top. As you're concentrating, as you're thinking, as you're kind of keeping your heads on a swivel, and it's not real clear, all of a sudden there's a flash, there's a sound, and the back left of the um, speeder where uh, Chal and Tate are gets hit by something. It's really not easy to tell at this instant what's happening, but all of you see it. So the first thing I want to get is um, I want to get a planetary um, piloting check from Chal. uh, Chal. So Chal, you have been hit. It It is already swung you, rotated you 90 degrees in the direction you were not going. And this is going to be an average check, and I'm adding a setback uh, because of it's a because of just the surprise of it all. So your uh, difficulty is two purple and a black setback. Um, okay. If you can go to your skills, just let me check if I have something for the setback because there are some skills that allow me to. I'm not sure where. To... Oh no, that's for scavenge only. Okay, so planetary. I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, piloting planetary. So, you get hit from behind. Um, something has hit the back of the um, of the speeder itself, and there and it was it was uh, uh, you can assume a blaster fire because of the flash of light. It wasn't like you hit something on the ground or anything. The um, the speeder is now spinning. Uh, the results were two uh, failures and three advantages. So, Chal, can you tell tell me what happens? So, as we got hit, we're obviously we're gonna crash. So, I'm. I will try to crash safely, and I will try to like land the speeder so it can block us from whoever, from the direction where we received the shot. So we would be like roughed up on the ground, but behind the speeder, like it would be in, uh, in I'm not sure if there is a sand or if it's more rough area, not that sandy, but somewhere like to get a cover once we uh, land. Now, the other immediate impact is going to be to you, Marshall. So, Marshall, um, you could not get a sense of where you heard a blaster fire. You you know you got hit by something. You can't tell from where. Chal is trying to get a hold of the speeder and minimize the amount of damage, but we, we now have a spinning speeder, and you're sitting there on the passenger side. My, my first instinct is to look at the damage, but, you know, that's not the problem. I need to look around and see what's, uh, what's above us, where did it come from. I'm scanning everything for motion, flashes, whatever. Um, and I'm keying the communicator. So so far, all I'm saying is bad words. Um, but uh, Okay. <laughs> and in this split second, and remember, this is all happening all at once, I want to get a sense, Rick's, their speeder was slightly, slightly ahead of you, right? Um, they were a little bit closer to the canyon wall than uh, you and Jacek were. You see the flash. You see the back, uh, back right engine of the uh, speeder. It gets hit, and you see the it, it blast and get destroyed. And as a result, they've already started spinning. Still, their momentum's moving forward. What is your immediate reaction? Uh, really, to... Uh, uh... The immediate reaction is to, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, it doesn't cause 
our speeder to uh, uh, impact theirs or uh, drift off or veer off and, and hit something else. So trying to be aware of my surroundings, knowing what maneuvers I need to make to be to make sure me and uh, uh, Jacek are are safe and um, uh, get ahead of, of, of where um, uh, of what just happened. And, and just so you know, Charles and Marshall, I'm going to be, I've not forgotten about those three advantages you got on that failure. I'm going to be uh, talking about those in just a little bit. But I do now need a planetary um, piloting from uh, from Ricks. So Ricks, you're going to have the same difficulty, which is uh, an average difficulty of two purple plus the setback for the surprise. Uh, you can go ahead and roll it, Will. I would like to use a light side point. All right, go ahead and use a light side, and I'm going to go ahead and upgrade um, on your side. Already? So Ooh. we have, uh, normally it would have been three green dice, three average ability dice, but because of the upgrade uh, from the light side, that turned into a yellow, and that yellow gave us a triumph. Uh, then the setback gave us nothing, and you got just one threat coming from the uh, difficulty. So that ends up with three successes, a threat, and if you can go ahead and add one strain for me, Ricks, um, the, just the stress of all of this is how I'm going to use that threat. Um, so you have no trouble with those successes navigating and avoiding any type of crash with the speeder in front of you. Um, more importantly, though, you have that triumph, and I, I want us to think about that triumph in the context of the fact that really it's kind of luck that you that whatever is about to happen, however you want to use that tr triumph, it was the luck of just the universe, right? Because if you using that light side is what gave you that triumph. So I'd be curious to know, what do you want to happen? You've avoided the crash. What is going to happen now, and what is something we can use that triumph for? Ooh, um, I would like to use that triumph to try to help uh, 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 Marshall and, um, uh, I guess it's Chol. Is that right? Yep. Uh, is, is that an option? Um, I so I'll I've... throw something out at you, and you guys, and I mean, this will be for all of you. How, what if the scenario is, is we've got one speeder in behind, right, where we have Ricks and Jacek, and in front of them we've got uh, the Marshal, and we've got uh, Chal, and boom, they get hit, they start spinning. Ricks not only has no difficulty at making sure that they just don't crash right into the back of that, but Ricks has the skill and the, and the wherewithal to edge up the speeder and stop the spinning. So maybe runs alongside and kind of stabilizes Charles' situation. How do we feel about that? I like it. Okay. I so like Rick's it. great. Rick's is um, able to just not only have the wherewithal, but Rick's you you move that speeder up and you're able to just position your speeder such that that Charl and um, and uh, the marshal stop their spinning, which is going to um, give. Uh, uh, Chal the ability to not worry about taking back control of the scenario because you've now compensated essentially for that broken uh, uh, propulsion in the back. Um, Chal can now worry about actually piloting. Now we're going to go to DT. DT, you're in the swoop bike. You hear it. You don't see anything, but you immediately hear the explosion. You hear the action. You can hear the scraping of the two speeders as uh, Rix is bringing it up, and you look over your right hand uh, shoulder and now you can see the chaos that's ensuing behind you. What is your first reaction? My first reaction is they're already behind me and able to deal with it. I am immediately looking around to see if I can get a better idea of where whatever caused the explosion came from. Because I don't believe that this is coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Much like the marshal, your head is on a swivel, right? You, both you and the marshal are in a scenario where you're not taking control of speeders and trying not to die. You guys can actually take a look at it, and we'll come back to those uh, perception checks in a second. Last but not least, let's go over to Titus, who's not immediately there. Titus, you did see a little bit, a lot more than the rest of them, because you saw the action happening. And ahead of you, about 100, 150 yards, there is uh, some... Uh, rocks that have obviously fallen down long ago from uh, the top of the canyon. And whatever this was, the blast came from behind these rocks, which is well ahead of you now. You saw the blast shot come out from the rocks. 
It hit the speeder um, holding uh, Chal and uh, the marshal. You see that spin happening. You see Ricks bring the speeder up to help stabilize that. You can see the DT is well aware of the situation. What are you doing? Um, Titus is uh, going to actually, as uh, so does Titus at least uh, see behind him that uh, Ricks is kind of taking care of the other speeder to an extent. You can. You look to your left more than behind you, but off to your left more than anything. You can see that it looks like Rick's has helped that situation. They might be manageable. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, Titus is, because uh, we all have com-, com links, right, linked to each other. All right, so Titus is going to uh, say to DT, the rocks up ahead. I'm heading over. Follow me. Roger, Roger. <laughs> Between the three of you, between Syl, DT, and Titus, I'd like to get an idea of uh, all of your perception uh, uh, skills. So I'd like to know what, how many of, how many dice and how many of them are yellow, if you, if you have any ranks in it. Green and yellow here. Okay. Green and yellow. One rank. Double, double green, one yellow. All right. And how about you, Rex? You said perception? Perception, yep. Uh, yeah, yellow, double green. Yellow. All right. So you and you and DT have the best perception skills. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, I think the person who has the best chance of seeing what's going on here is definitely DT. So DT, I'm going to give you a boost um, as you're not the only one looking, right? And I'm going to set the difficulty um, to average. So just two purple dice, and then the setback um, for just the overall conditions. Um, and situation, if you want to go ahead and give me a perception. Lots of dice and you ended up with a success and an advantage. For the success, DT, between the calm you got from uh, from Titus, now that you have really kind of traced back, you, you heard the blast, you saw the blast where it ended, you're able to trace back that there are some rocks about 150 yards ahead of you. That has to be where the blast came from. You can't see anything that generated it, but you're confident between what you heard and what you've been able to calculate, that's where they are. Um, what is that advantage going to do for us? Hmm. I feel like the, the best thing to do for right now is bank it. Okay. Uh, bas- basically, uh, yeah, bank, bank it. He, he would... He would Nah, he didn't. He he didn't see anything extra. He just saw that that's exactly where they are. I was gonna say he could call out some some specific numbers or help if he saw anybody. Let's. But. Do, what do you? How do you feel about this? Is that if at any point we need to do a situa- situational awareness of any type um, in the kind of the current canyon scenario, you're gonna get a boost. Sounds good. All right, great. So now let's go back. So let's go back to Chal. So Chal. The situation just a second ago was horrific. You couldn't get control of it. You were spinning. Now suddenly Rix is able to pull the other speeder up. He stops you from spinning, but you're quickly losing power. So I'd like to know um, exactly what uh, the next move is. So I will try, uh, so I'm losing power. So I have to stop the speeder, right? I can't like just dash through. Okay, in that case, uh, I will try to slowly and gently uh, pull it to the ground so we can safely jump out. And I would say around like, huh, a nice chunk of rock. Like I'm thinking if I was spinning around this area, oh, sorry, I'm, I wanted to show you. Can I ping on the map, like on the south when there is the bunch of, bunch of rocks and I would like to like safely go to the ground somewhere in that area. So here's what I'm willing to do. Um, let's take, let's use up some of those because you had some really nice advantages on your piloting um, skill, even though you failed. <laughs> let's yeah. do a couple things. One, well within safe distance of you being able to, to have a controlled stop uh, for the speeder, there is um, some rocks ahead of you um, where you're going to be able to basically stop the speeder before you hit the rocks, bring the speeder down safely, and if you were to get out, there is enough cover there to give both you and uh, Syl cover from whatever's shooting at you. Um, yeah. And we're not going to roll or anything. We're just going to say immediately that's what the speeder, that's what you do with the speeder. Does that sound good? Yes, yes. That was the idea. All right. 
Wonderful. All right, so next we're going to have to do a little bit of initiative. So let me get our initiative set. And this is definitely going to be of vigilance. So you're going to go to your combat tab and roll 20. And uh, under there you should have a place where you can do vi a vigilance roll under initiative. <laughs> wow, so... <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right, dude. We've got four. Who's, uh, who's missing? We've got four. We're missing a fifth. So uh, f uh, so where we are right now is we've got uh, basically four PCs. The best one came out of Sill with four successes and an advantage. Then we've got uh, one success, one advantage. And, let's go, and then the other two um, just below that. But really none of that matters until our NPCs roll. So let's go ahead, and theirs is going to be a cool check. They uh, were well aware of what's coming. Okay. We're going to go ahead and reorder this. So we've got a PC slot followed by an NPC. Two more PC slots, our second NPC, and then our final PC slot. So we're going to go into what's called structure time, which is different than narrative time. And you've got slots set up for um, everybody involved, uh, for, uh, in this case five PCs and uh, two, N two NPCs, who we don't know who they are quite yet. And uh, we start off with a PC slot. So who would like to take that first slot? And to give you an idea of distances here, right now, you guys are all long distance from the uh, rocks. The speeder with um, uh, with the marshal and with Chal is stopped. You guys are still in the speeder uh, and you're near the rocks. Rix, you um, are technically not stopped yet, but uh, right by them as the as they stopped, the bikes are still moving forward. Titus and DT, you're on point. One of you take it. I'll go. All right. So, Titus, what are we going to do? Like I said, you're long distance from uh, from the rocks, and you have yet to be able to see what what is causing this to happen from the rocks. By the way, one thing for the initiative: the so the first number is the successes, the second is advantage, right? Correct. And the last and shouldn't the last PC be before the NPC? Just the not oh, the that's critical. Yeah. Idea. No. Good call. I see you rules yeah, like right there. Well done. I put it in the wrong <laughs> order. Um, the other thing, too, is that, uh, Marshall, you got a... Let's see, DT, you got a triumph. Um, and so did the Marshall. Yeah, we got two triumphs yeah, in so here. So both of those triumphs are going to give you guys a free maneuver before we even start this. So let's actually do that first. So, Marshall, what is your free maneuver before we go through the order? I believe my speeder just got brought to a, uh, a halt behind these rocks. I'm getting out of the speeder behind those rocks. Okay, great. So you hop out of the speeder. You head right to the rocks. Um, and DT, how about you? What is your free maneuver? Uh, DT is going to keep going generally towards the rocks, but is going to swing around to the... He's going to make as though he's going to pass them, but is actually just making to flank them, knowing that the Mandalorian is going probably straight for it. Perfect. Okay, great. So what we're going to do then for you is you're going to go from long into short distance. So you're going to be right now the closest uh, to to the rocks themselves. Um, and I don't know if that changes who we want to go first. Um, uh, or do, is it, are we better off uh, having uh, uh, the Mandalorian get within short distance as well? You still want to take I th that first I think slot getting, take? I think me getting into short distance will, will be beneficial for everybody. Excellent. Or at All least right. shorter distance so I can see them. So in your slot, um, uh, Titus, you have the ability to do a maneuver and an action. You can trade that action in for a second maneuver or you can take an ac uh, maneuver and an action and then spend two strain to take an additional maneuver. Um, and you can do all of that in any order. So you can go action, maneuver, 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 action, maneuver, however you want to set it up. Um, so, uh, you take this first slot. What would you like? 
All right, so uh, I have a couple questions first. Number one, uh, does the speeder have any weapons attached to it? It does not. So the bike itself is weaponless. Okay. Uh, Can the bike be driven one-handed? Yes, you can drive it one-handed. And what it'll do is if we do any type of piloting, um, it'll just add a setback to whatever piloting okay. you need to do. All right. And then how, uh, based on me being on this speeder now for quite some time, how far could I get in uh, the time in one maneuver with the speeder? With a, with a single maneuver, you could go from long to short. Um, and keeping in mind that, you know, one, the, the way distances are handled in this system is it's kind of everything's relative. Um, sure. And uh, so, yeah, you'd be in short distance. Now, um, once in short distance, um, we can talk about what you're able to see at that point, And that might just may, maybe make that decision. So do you want to say, let's make a maneuver now and get short? Yes. So I'd like to make a maneuver. And I what I'm specifically trying to do with the short maneuver is to um, kind of flank around the rocks like I, I'm trying to get past the rock just a little bit so that I can see beyond it if that makes sense well, so we're, we're you're... pincering them essentially yes got it yeah so there's a ton of space to um to the left of these rocks right so if you're if we're driving towards the rocks off to the left we've got DT on his swoop bike shooting forward with his free maneuver he's now in short distance um what you can see, uh, Titus, um, as you are headed straight towards the rocks and you start getting closer, there is room off to the right. So there's space between these um, sets of rocks and the right-hand side of this canyon. Um, so if you want to kind of head towards the right of these rocks, um, there is room for you. It's going to take a little bit of navigation in order to kind of, you know, thread the needle um, between the rocks and the um, side of the canyon, but that's very doable. All right, let's do it. So you start veering off to the right, Titus, and you, you know, you're headed to kind of shoot that gap. Um, so, and you look off to your left, and you can see DT is thinking very similar to how you would like to think as well. Um, and he's obviously going uh, for the other one. As you start approaching now, you have an angle. You can definitely see there's kind of uh, two, two beings. Um, There's one in a set of rocks closer to you, right exactly, still at short distance. Um, It's not, you're not quite able to make it out, but there is a humanoid figure that that is hiding behind these rocks. And then the next set of rocks behind it, which is still long distance from you, um, uh, you can see that there's a second being there as well. You have an action which you can turn into a maneuver, or we can take a additional maneuver and still leave an action for two straight. All right. Uh, Titus is actually, so would it be a maneuver to dismount from the bike and draw a weapon? What I'm willing to do is, is you can do a maneuver. So you can, a maneuver is always to draw, right? So to draw a weapon, it's always going to be a maneuver. Um, okay. and I'll allow you to, I'll allow you to stop the bike and get off of it for a single maneuver as well. Uh, actually, well, if I can just draw my weapon while still being on the bike, I'll do that. Great. With so, a um, and, and did you want to take an action? Um, yeah, yes. So he's strain? going. Yeah, so he's going to um, uh, draw his uh, spear blaster with a maneuver for the two strain, and then take an action. All right, beautiful. So let's go ahead and add that strain. So if you go to your token, um, Titus, and click on it, you can just hit plus three inside the green circle that'll pop up when you click on your icon. And that should add the two strain for you. The green circle. Uh, exactly, yeah. When you click on it, you'll have the red circle will be your wounds, the green circle will be your strain, and if you just click inside that green circle and hit, type in plus two and hit enter, it should just add that strain for you. Perfect. All right, so we're going to take a shot at this figure that's close to you in short range? Yes, sir. All right, so short range is going to be an easy difficulty. Um, this thing has cover with all the rocks and everything, that's, so that's going to add a setback. Um, so your difficulty is set. Um, go to your weapon under combat, and you should have a, a die to roll near the weapon. Let's give it a roll. Sure. Uh, how does the stun setting work, by the way? Do I just choose whether you just, it's on stun yeah, or not? Yeah, you just let, you let me know whether you want stun or not. All right. I would like stun. Okay. 
All right, so uh, you ended up with a failure and two advantages. So you are on the bike. You see this figure ahead of you as you keep uh, heading forward. You pull your uh, spear blaster out. You take a shot, and what happens? All right, uh, I take the shot, and uh, the the stun uh, misses. It hits the rocks, but um, some of the impact, the the um, sort of sonic impact of um, the stun um, startles the uh, startles the the target uh, to the point that they actually have to um, they somewhat move out of the way and expose themselves to either DT or to Marshall. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to have whatever that thing is, is not going to have cover um, unless it makes a maneuver and, and takes the next slot. How does that sound? That works for me. Beautiful. So you see this thing back off as you hit the rocks themselves, the rocks itself, and in order to avoid being hit, um, it, uh, it, he, he or she or it pulls away. So that's our first PC slot. Now we have our NPC slot. So this thing pull, um, steps away, and now you can get get a sense, um, uh, Titus, what you're what you're looking at. And all right. Titus, you have encountered these things before. This is a Gand, which is kind of this, in Star Wars, is kind of a strange insectoid type um, creature. You see that it, it is a Gand, and the Gand has stepped back. The Gand um, is armed and um, has a, uh, a heavy blaster pistol, um, or I'm sorry, a blaster rifle in his hand. He immediately aims, brings the gun up, and takes a shot at you. So he's going to use a maneuver to get back into cover, um, and then he's going to bring the gun up and uh, give you a shot. So let's take a look. Now, with you moving, um, I'm going to go ahead and give a setback to this, um, because I think that makes you a little bit of a harder target, but you are short distance, so it's only going to be difficulty one. He is not going to use a dark side point. Um, do you want to use a light side point to make his difficulty harder? Sure. All right, so that's going to upgrade his difficulty. Go ahead and um, go to your dice pool and choose uh, use light side. Lord knows you guys have them to use. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to just take it on the chin. All right, great. I'd so rather, I'd rather with the shot and everything else him potentially expose himself. So even Beautiful. further. All right, so... He fires, and boy, what an exchange here. So you're blasting away with your rifle. He's blasting back at you, and you guys, just so much in all the chaos, he misses as well. Um, he's going to um, give a boost. Uh, he got a failure with two advantages. He's going to give a boost to his other compatriot, um, who's behind the other set of rocks. But what everybody else is seeing right now is just blaster fire coming from you, Titus, coming back at you. That is the second, or the first of the NPC slots. Now we have three more um, PCs to go. Howdy friends, Craig here. You deserve a new play mat. Here on the third floor, we use mats by Mars. They are scratch resistant, waterproof, wet erase marker compatible, almost free of glare and lighter than neoprene. Mats by Mars gives you over 40 designs to choose from. You pick a mat, pick a design, and then you pick an overlay, like one for Marvel Crisis Protocol, Star Wars Legion, or even Malifaux 3rd Edition. Those overlays will really speed up your deployment and make the placement of objective markers so easy. Use our promotion code in the show notes to get a 10% discount on your first order. In the notes of your order, you can even request the third floor logo on your mat for free, that makes the best mat in the business even a little better. So get some new mats, save yourself some money, and help support the show. Go to matsbymars.com. All the details are in the show notes, including the discount code. Who am I missing? Somebody didn't come through. Hold on a second, because we've only got four PC slots. Let me take a look. Did somebody just hit... Did, somebody might have hit it not under um, initiative. Ah, Titus. So, uh, that yep, so I'm going to... 
Yep, so make sure you do it under the initiative thing, um, but I'm going to go ahead and get you added here. So you got a one through. Okay. So give me just one second. Good. So actually, we have three PC slots before the next NPC goes. All right, so who's going to take the first of these three PC slots? Or maybe, four PC maybe slots? Maybe Joel... Chol has a just quick turn or quick idea. So if I understood correctly, Marshall got on a shorter distance, taking uh, taking the lead, right, and trying to get closer to to those to this Gant and the other guy. So I will. I Actually, will just... distance distance wise, Chol, right now you and you and the Marshall are the same. You guys are both at short distance. The only difference in this situation is that you're still in the speeder. Um, but right next to you, not far at all, um, is, is the Marshal hiding behind the rocks. Okay, so my idea was to just go after Marshal because he, he, was, he jumped out quicker than I was managed to make a full stop and he was already on point. So I will follow him and instead of taking the gun and trying to take a few shots, I will mainly support him. Just call out the guys I'm seeing, I will try to basically give him a uh, boost to his next action. So I will maybe reload his gun and, and make his firing uh, more comfortable for now. So Chal, you guys have not seen what exactly is behind the rocks quite yet, but you are now in a position where you could. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and have you do a perception roll. So it's going to be e an easy perception roll. The pool is ready. Let's see. Oh, for you. Okay, let's do this. Don't need. Well, I guess I did need a light point. <laughs> <laughs> so you um you got ended up with uh, netting three advantages. So Chala, in my mind, you kind of um, hopped out, headed towards um uh the marshal. So you're in cover with the marshal, and you have immediately started to get a sense of what's going on. You know, you do have a sense with these advantages that it is definitely whatever shot you came from these rocks themselves. And you can also see the exchange of fire that's happening between whatever's behind these rocks, which you really can't get a sense of what it is yet, and with uh, Titus on the swoop bike itself. Um, how would you like to use those three advantages? So uh, I think two I can exchange for a maneuver. So I will take out my blaster pistol. Perfect. And, and so that was one maneuver to get to Marshall, action to assist him, and second from the advantages to get the blaster out. And the third yep. one, hmm, I wonder what I can use them like in, in a sense of perception where that advantage go. Well, we uh, can. How about this? Uh, you you've gotten a now now that th now that you're not trying to, you know, control the speeder. <laughs> so the, the immediate adrenaline uh, craziness is over. You have for the first time really started to get a sense of the overall things that are happening. And like you said, um, Charlie, you've been yelling out some things. You know, hey, the rocks. Hey, this. And kind of like giving mm. a kind of a tactical things. What do you think about a uh, floating boost to the next action that somebody yeah. takes? Okay, so I get my things together and uh, get ready for what, what will happen next. Okay. Beautiful. Take one boost. Yeah. All right, so we've got now Titus has gone, Chal has gone. We've got uh, three more PCs to go before our last NPC goes. I was going to say DT is going to take the, the last one uh, so that the other two can, can be set uh, with the, the rest of the squad by the speeders getting set up beautiful so let's hop over there so let's talk let's uh so that's going to leave ricks um and the and the marshal and then we're going to have dt take that third slot uh, ricks and marshal what do you want to do well my main goal here is to to make sure that uh Jacek is is safe so uh, i really want to get to a a point where um, there's limited visibility to me and uh and, and the, and the uh, my vehicle um and uh, uh, basically just protect him. So uh, there's not a whole lot I'm gonna do this this first round. So what, what you can do uh, with two maneuvers, uh, Rex, is you definitely could bring the speeder um, right to where uh, the Marshall and Charles speeder is rested. And your best best cover is in the same set of rocks where you saw the Marshall jump to. So with okay. two maneuvers, um, I'm, I'm gonna allow you to get you and Jacek behind those rocks. Sounds great. Let's do it. All right, great. So. You, you, you bring the speeder to a stop. You're able to help, you know, kind of lift slash help Jason get out of there. He's not quite as nimble as somebody, uh, as, as the youngin you are compared to him. 
and you immediately, um, you know, bent down, uh, kind of covering him. You bring him in, in, into cover on those rocks. So, Marshall, you are already behind the rocks. You now see um, uh, uh, both Chal has gotten there and he's drawn his pistol. You see that Rix has now got Jason kind of covered and they're heading directly towards you. All right, Craig, quick uh, situational awareness here. This is now out of range of my pistol, right? Yes. Um, well, you're short distance. What is the range on your on your pistol? A short range. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I I think uh, let's let's have. <laughs> okay. No. Got it. Okay. So. Right now, Marshall, you can't see what that is. You don't have a shot yet. But what we can do is, for one maneuver, we can have you draw the pistol, and we can go ahead and give you an aim uh, for your second maneuver. Um, so that'll give you a boost on the first shot you make. How does that sound? Go, f- go for it. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So DT, the bike is going forward. You see uh, what's happening behind you. You see the exchange of fire happening on the rocks themselves. I want you to do a quick vigilance check, and I'm actually going to give you a boost uh, because of you have a much better sense of where this thing is based on the uh, shots being fired uh, between him and Titus. Uh, so it's going to be an easy check with a boost. Um, actually, I owe you two. I owe you another boost. So let's go two boosts. Um, let's go ahead and give us a perception roll. Uh, it's going to be perception. So three successes, two advantages. So as you now um, are moving forward, you're able to see this Gand with a rifle taking shots um, at at Titus. Um, you've got uh, two advantages, which you could assign to yourself if you wanted to um, give yourself uh, a boost on your next action. Um that's completely up to you, but so far you've used no actions or maneuvers. Okay, so uh, I have my main pistol out since this uh, bike doesn't have any guns. I've been kind of riding it with kind of holding the gun on the handlebar, uh, if that's possible. Uh, for a light side, I'll let you do that. Ooh, oh. <laughs> You drive a hard bargain. <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and he'll he'll pull it out. Okay, so there's the maneuver. one maneuver. <laughs> um, and we'll go ahead and use those uh, advantages to boost my stunning shot to him uh, from the back since he's focused on my good Mandalorian friend. All right, excellent. So what we'll, uh, what we'll do is it's going to be, again, short distance is going to give you one difficulty. You've got the boost coming to you because of your the quality of the perception roll. Um, so this is going to be a maneuver and an action. If you'd like, you can spend two strain for another maneuver to aim. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, great. So go ahead and uh, add two strain for me. And I've had, you now have two boosts, and you mentioned that uh, we're doing the pistol on stun. So if you go to combat, go to your gun, and give it a roll. The pool is ready for you. Wow. So that's going to be three successes and a an advantage. So the base damage is going to be six plus three. That's nine damage. And that's a critical for me. Um, it is. What's yeah? You're, no, you need you need two advantages for a crit. Oh, sorry. I, I just saw the two. I thought that was uh, two successes. Oh no no no! You got one uh, one uh, uh, one advantage. You need two for the crit. Um, still a, a damn good roll. So let me go ahead and first take care of the damage. All right, so y- you hit this Gant, um, and it definitely it definitely impacted him, not nearly enough to either bring him down um, or whatnot. Can you kind of walk me through kind of this series of events? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm imagining I'm on the bike. I'm essentially, like, standing up in the stirrups and taking really close aim and uh as i see he's he's getting ready to trade shots uh with titus more uh i'm gonna say i uh specifically hit his weapon arm is it possible with that advantage i can make him if not drop the weapon at least like fumble it a bit 
you won't really not for one advantage that costs uh, I think to disarm is going to be three advantages um, and you need two to actually add a setback so what I was going to suggest for that advantage is uh, you've got a couple options one you can do a floating boost you can say the next person to act is going to get a boost uh, you can recover one of those strain um, that you Sold. took <laughs> beautiful so let's go ahead and drop that strain down by one and in my mind narratively DT that's a scenario where you're now you're not flying on a bike you've now settled down you've now established what at least the initial threat is which is this gand here and that allows you um really not to be using nearly as much processing power as you had a lot of the variables are now solved for right all right so now this last npc slot um I need... you shoot the gun the stun goes out, um, you know, you, you, you definitely hit the Gand, which is really the first time that, because uh, you can see the Titus has not had any success whatsoever. Out of the left corner um, of your viewports, though, you see an, another figure step out from the rocks. And this figure um, is long distance from you. Um, not really clear, but you are able to see that this one has also got a rifle, and she's bringing up the rifle and going to take a shot at you. So I'm going to set her difficulty. Um, she is... Um, she's not going to use a dark side. Um, she's the roller, so now that it leaves you guys, uh, DT, in order to use a light side if you'd like. Nope, I'll, I'll take it. All right, so she has had enough time to aim, so she's going to go ahead and aim. And let's see how this goes. So she takes the shot. And DT, it hits you um, and the up, uh, upper left arm. Um, you weren't even paying attention. You didn't even have enough time to kind of react to it. It all happened very quickly. You were, you know, you're able to hit the um, hit the gand, the, and um, you know assess that situation. And then you see a flash come from your left, hit you in the shoulder. Her base damage is nine um, plus the one success. So it's going to be ten minus your soak. Which is three, and I'm checking, I think that's including what I'm getting from the vest, because the vest is, it does an extra soak versus energy weapons. Oh, so no, that won't, that won't count. So this is an energy weapon, so your soak is plus one. Okay, so it's four, so I'll take yep. six. So you're going to go ahead and take six. Um, not enough to take you out, DT, but it, she hit you, and she um, uh, blasted you pretty good. We're now at the end of the turn. So everything resets, and we've got a PC before another NPC. So <clears throat> who wants to take that first PC slot? Uh, real quick, is that six wounds or six strain? It's going to be six wounds. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Titus is going to go go ahead and go again, especially with uh, the Gand somewhat exposed. All right, so Titus, you um, have you stopped the bike at this point? Yes. Okay, so you've stopped. The I'm, I'm, si I'm sitting on it, but Got it. I've stopped. So you've stopped the bike. You're exchanging fire with this Gand. You see DT shot in and actually hit the Gand um, uh, itself. Um, so what are we going to do now? You're at short distance. Can I also see where the marshal's positioned at as well? You can. So you can see where okay. everybody is kind of uh, now behind the rocks. Off to This would be off to your far left on the other side of the canyon. Okay. And they're short distance and... to you as well. And and I see the the woman. She's with a blaster rifle, right? That that's at long range for me. You really couldn't. Um, so the way that the, okay. the way that rocks are angled, you can see the gand. And you're on the kind of the right side. You can see the next set of rocks. You saw the blaster shot um, fire out from behind those rocks and hit DT, but you don't see anything as far as what's behind there and what caused that to happen. Sure. Okay. Uh, and and well, whatever that is, we know it's a she now. She's um, she's long distance yeah. from you. Okay. Uh, Titus is going to continue to uh, try and shoot the Gand, get that immediate threat out of the way. Um, and um, you said that I, uh, with a maneuver I can aim? You can, correct? so you can use a maneuver to aim. Okay, I will do that, and then I will uh, fire off another shot at uh, the Gand. Great, so in the dice pool I've got one setback because he has cover. He's, it's one difficulty because it's only short distance. I've given you the boost die uh, for the aiming, so you can go right to your gun and give it a roll. All right. Uh, Titus is not stunning. Okay, great. <laughs> wow. So you got three successes and an advantage. So the base damage for your Spear Blaster is eight plus the three. That's going to put us at 11. 
So you hit the Gand. Um, it's not going to be enough to bring the Gand down, but I'd like to hear what happens. Uh, I saw DT's uh, initial shot at the Gand, correct? You did. Okay, and where did that hit the Gand? I uh, hit, hit the Gand in the uh, kind of the upper left part of his torso. Okay. Uh, I try and, uh, with my aim, I try and aim for the same spot. Great. So I'm trying to uh, uh, intensify the wound, as it were, to make it more difficult for um, the Gand to move around and do what it wants to do. Uh, with the advantage, I'm going to throw that up as a floating uh, for the next PC to act, hopefully either Marshall or DT. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to take the next... And and, uh, and actually, if if I may, uh, is, is it okay for me to say something on the comlink? Of course. That's an incidental. Okay, so I'm also... Yeah, so uh, as an incidental, um, Titus will say, DT, Marshall, Gens hit powerfully. It's up to you. Also, something's in the rocks up above. <laughs> DT's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take that first NPC slot. So the Gand has been, you know, uh, boy, the Gand felt good, had the drop on you guys. And suddenly the pincer move is, is working. We've got him now getting shot uh, from one, one bike. Another bike has gotten close, shooting um, at his well. He is going to, uh, you see him immediately, um, Titus, and you see this better than anybody, though, DT, you see it as well. He basically goes from behind the rocks to that gap that I talked about, Titus, uh, to the right of you. You see him go to the other side of the canyon, and he's now out of your line of sight. But for you, DT, you have a little bit of a better angle than Titus does uh, from a crosswise. You see that there is some sort of opening that he seems to be heading for. So there appears to be a cave, which you didn't notice before, and it looks like um, uh, the Gand is, is, is essentially um, uh, running away. Um, and with his two maneuvers, he has no trouble getting to the mouth of the cave. So for you, um, Titus, he's still short distance, though he's completely out of your sight now. You only saw him basically kind of go and hug the right-hand side of the canyon. He's now long distance for uh, everybody behind the rocks, including UDT on the bike. So we now have all the rest of the PCs get to go. The Gand is out, outside of your range at now. I think, the, I think your pistol has just a, uh, um, a short range, yep. Oh, and, and I've been calling it long. It's medium range. The Gand is medium range. Medium? Yeah, He's medium. Long. Medium, sorry. So I have a, <laughs> I have a medium range uh, blaster pistol. Uh, uh, if I can uh, get a pop shot off on uh, that might free up a potential floating uh, advantage that we could use later. I'm not trying to metagame, but... <laughs> so, Rick's right where we left you on the end of your last slot, you have now gotten behind the rocks. Uh, Jacek is, is with you, kind of huddled down. He immediately kind of drops to his knees and is, you know, just like this, covering his head and, um, uh, you know, kind of has his back to everything. But you are a little bit more upright now that you're behind cover. Um, so we'll, we'll have you take that first slot. All right. Sounds good. So, yeah, I'm going to, uh, uh, I guess I have to pull my gun out. Um, that'll be a maneuver, a maneuver. And then, um, uh, let's go ahead and I can take two strain to aim. Is that you right? Sure can. If you want to still take an action. So go ahead and add two strain. All right. I will definitely do that. And that aim maneuver is going to give you a boost. You're at medium distance, so it's going to be difficulty two. It's going to be an average difficulty, and the Gand is still going to get uh, cover uh, because of all the rocks and everything between you and him. And, Rich, you're now looking at the back of him, and you're at this very similar angle as DT, so you're able to see where this Gand is running to. The pool is ready. If you want to go to your combat, go to your gun and give it a and pop a shot. Pew. All right. Very nice. So two successes and three advantages. First, let's take a look, and that's going to be five base. So it's going to be a total of seven. So you hit the, you definitely hit the Gand. Um, and the Gand falls to his knees, but has not been completely taken out. Um, but this, uh, this did not tickle. Um, and by the way, are we, are we stunning or are we... Um, uh, no, not stunned. Okay. <laughs> no. So, Rick's, um, it, 
the, sh the shot hurt. Um, he is definitely on his knees. In fact, he's got, he didn't drop his rifle, but he's gone almost uh, to all, all, all fours at this point, falling forward. He was able to catch himself. That's how you know you didn't take him out. Um, but this, this brought him to his knees at the mouth of this cave. Hi, I'm Keith Suderman, and I'm a patron of Third Floor Wars. You'll never mistake me for a competitive player, but I really enjoy the analysis and the advice I get from Tabletop Talk. You should be a patron, too. Head on over to Patreon.com and search for Third Floor Wars, or just click the link in the show notes below. What is it worth to you to get this podcast on a weekly basis? Is it worth a dollar a month? Five dollars a month? Twenty dollars a month? If you'd like to help support the work that we're doing here on Third Floor Wars, please go buy our Patreon. We're at patreon.com slash thirdfloorwars. There you can pledge at any level, any dollar amount. Whatever you give us will help us put out quality content on a regular basis and hopefully make tabletop gaming a little bit better for you every week. When we created our Patreon, we purposely did not create tiers. We wanted listeners that wanted to support us to be able to choose any level, but I do want to give a shout out to those patrons that uh, donate the most per month. So special thanks goes to Nick Westbrook, Marcus, Craig Chuba, Kevin Smith, Mike Schmidt, Cody Ravicki, Drawn X, Shergay, Carl Lee, Corwin Solez, Alan Brown, Ambrose Ingram, Stephen Morris, Sam Newman, and James Hahn. Because the amount of m money that you support us with each month, we're able to put out this content on a regular basis. Thanks a ton. All right, we've got uh, three more PCs to go. Uh, Sill is darting from cover. It takes one maneuver to close to close, one maneuver to close to his position, and then I can brawl with him, can I not? So right now you're medium distance. Um, <clears throat> so with two maneuvers, you're going to be able to get within short um, and be within a maneuver of, um, of uh, en engaging him. So right now you wouldn't be able to get to engage, Sill, but... What you would be able to do with two maneuvers is to get across the canyon into those rocks where he, where the Gand was, and you'll have, you know, full view of, of the Gand at the mouth of the cave. Um, and then you could take, uh, for two strain, you can still take an action if you'd like. Question, do I lose my aiming dice when I, uh, No, when I I'm going to keep, that aim is something that you established before. So no, you would still get, you still have that aim hanging out there. So you still have a boost coming to your next shot. I will, uh, I will run much closer to him. I will close to that close range and uh, and I will I will level that uh, that Grail's blaster at him. <laughs> and it remind me, did Grail's blaster have a um, stun setting? I'm trying to remember. I have no idea. He does have a I stun haven't... setting, so would you like it on stun? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. But right. uh, mostly I'm going to use my voice as a weapon. And I'm going to let him know, stop. We have you surrounded. Drop your weapon now. All right, beautiful. So you're going to be, uh, it's a single difficulty because you're in uh, you're in short range. And I've got the boost in place for you for your aiming maneuver. He has no cover from where you are now because um, you have a straight shot between uh, him and the Gand. Um, I am going to use my lonely little dark side point and give you guys full... Um, uh, Seven zero, and I'm going to upgrade your difficulty by one. So I am ready when you are. If you do, want to go to go do, to, do we still have that uh, that floating success out there? I believe you do have a floating boost. That's correct. So let's go ahead and let's add that as that well. Let's drop that one on this also. Yep. So you got two boosts, uh, one difficulty die that's been upgraded to a red because I used a dark side. So the uh, pool is ready. Um, do we have uh, the gun? Did we put the gun into your character no. sheet? All right. So let's no, fix. No, it's not there. Give me a quick second and I will fix that. It won't take but a moment. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. I, I went and looked and I went, oh no. <laughs> Craig, if the, uh, if he's able to respond to my, uh, to my shout, then I'm not pulling the trigger. Um, can I hold action to see what he does? Yes. Yeah. So give me one second. All right, Marshall, if you go to your um, sheet now you should see that blaster it's going to be the third weapon yep. on your sheet yep so, I'm showing it um, 
so Marshall, you you yell that out. The Gand um, is now kind of crawling. Um, trying to get trying to get to this cave, he's not quite fast enough yet to be able to get to the cave to get any type of cover. He, you see him kind of turn his head back as he hears you he hears you speaking. He does not need, seem to be stopping as he starts mo- as he's crawling towards the cave. All right, I'll squeeze just All like right. they taught us in academy. So on that on, on that new weapon, oh good lord! Mm. All right, so <laughs> we had nice. two boosts. Uh, your uh, skill is uh, three uh, three proficiency with one rank, so you rolled uh, two green and a um, uh, yellow against the two red. All of the successes got blanked out. The only success you got was from a triumph, which uh, the two right. failures take out. So you're not going to hit him. Right, right. But you ended up with four advantages and a triumph. Um, so let's take us back to you running across the um, the to uh, the canyon to close the distance. Um, walk me through what happens. You know, I uh, I came running up. I shouted to him to stop or I'll shoot, and I let one go. It uh, it hit his weapon and spun that out of his hands. Um, and um, with that triumph, it uh, it left a uh, a large smoking. Um, scorch mark it, directly in front of his hands as he was crawling. He can do whatever he likes about that, but he knows <laughs> I've got him ranged. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So here's what we're going to do. You have no trouble using those advantages. You're going to use three of those advantages to literally shoot the gun out of his hand. Um, so the the rifle itself goes flying way ahead of him. In fact, to, to where you can't even see it, it goes flying into the cave. Um, for the Triumph, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade his di- the difficulty on the next thing he does. Um, so, and in my mind, the blaster shot hits the rifle; it goes flying. There's, you know, smoke in front of him uh, that came from from the shot itself. This gant is shook. So, whatever this gant tries to do next is definitely going to be uh, uh, a lot more difficult um, as a result. Sounds good. All right, so we have had, um, so far acting, we had, of course, Titus go, we had uh, the Marshal go, DT, you have gone as well, right? Not this turn, no. Not this turn, so who, let's see. So Rix. Who, oh, Rix, Rix, that's right. So we've got, what we got left then is DT and... And Chal. And Chal. Who wants to take the uh, first of the two slots remaining before an NPC gets to go? I'll take it unless Chal has any it's issue fine. with that. Yeah, you take cool. it. So... DT, having just gotten shot, uh, can he tell who just shot him? Get a, a better idea of who and what she is? Um, so you you saw her, you, and she appears to be humanoid, may not be human. Um, she definitely has a rifle. That's what you got shot from. She's uh, still long distance from where you are um, right now, behind another set of rocks um, on the far side. That's about all of the information that you have, and she is still visible. It still has okay. a rifle aimed at you. Okay. Um, so what DT will want to do, and let me just paint this picture and we can break it down into actions in a second. Yep. Um, he will, if possible, want to close the distance and get behind a big rock in, in the process of doing that. Uh, and... Uh, on the comlink, call out that yes, there is someone else up here. It turns out, uh, if there's not a big enough rock uh, between him and her, he will duck behind the the nearest big rock so as not to be slagged uh, by a second shot. I guess the idea I would do with the second one is he would aim by like knowing where she is and kind of thinking where she can. Be, uh, if she moves here's what we can do so right now you're at long distance um what we can do is you've got two maneuvers that you can use um uh up ahead um uh which would then get you in short distance of her you can take one maneuver to get up ahead and then i'll i'll allow you to then either get off the bike and get um uh, in cover, there really isn't enough cover for you and the bike. Um, or we can have you take, if you want to take the bike there for your second maneuver um, and get parked. So I will allow you to close a range band and get cover. 
um, for two for two maneuvers. That will still leave you with an action if you want to take two strain. That sounds stupendous. Okay, great. So, are we taking? The, are you hop? Are you hopping off the bike and running to this rock, or did you uh, hit the gas and then kind of jolt forward, staying on the bike? I'm going to hit the gas okay. and jolt forward. So you're able to get the bike behind another rock, which is going to give you cover to this. You now have a clear, uh, clear sight, and you can see her. She's short distance away. Um, it, it, uh, a female human. Um, she's got a blaster rifle, which you already knew because she already hit you with it. Um, and you, of course, still have your pistol out if you want to take a shot. You bet I do. All right. And I think we're out of floating boosts. Am I right? Yes. Okay. However, I am going to use a light side point. All right. So here's what I've done. I've set the, because you're short distance, you only have one difficulty die, but she does have cover from you, so there's your setback. I've upgraded your roll um, using that light side point, uh, so we're ready for you to take a shot at our mystery woman. And we are stuck. Okay. So <laughs> we have, um, the, because of the upgrade, you rolled two yellow and a green, and you're up against one purple, one setback. The setback gave us nothing. We got a threat coming from the purple die, and then we got good stuff from all of your ability dice. You ended up with four successes and a triumph. So that's going to be a total of ten damage. You got six base plus four, the uh, four successes. So let me take care of the damage first. And uh, what are we going to do with that triumph? Walk me through what happens. Hmm. I mean, what I'd really like to do is have the uh, the blaster fire from my shot overload it and uh, have it, if not explode, then at least be inoperable for a minute. So what you can do is we can do a couple things um, on the Triumph. One, we can definitely have you hit the gun. Um, we can have that cause her to drop the rifle. We could also have it so she keeps the rifle, but it damages the rifle, which means if she takes any more shots with that rifle, it's going to have a setback built into it. Um, so I'm, I'm good with the disarm. I'm good with that. We can also have it so you eliminate her cover, um, either by, uh, by, you know, in order for her to... And in order for her uh, to react to that shot, she's basically stepped out of cover, so she's exposed to you. Um, so those are those are three things we can do with that triumph. Um, you could also clear out your strain. Yeah, because I just took two from doing that. Now let, let's go ahead and damage the the rifle. That that setback on the gun seems like a good idea. Uh, and then uh, just on the com, uh, I will want to say. Yes, Mandalorian. It turns out there is a humanoid up here with a blaster rifle. Right, so let's go to our last PC slot, and that's going to be Chal. Yes. So, uh, to get my things together, Keith and I think Rix are running like to some cave after that Gant, right? And DT was shooting at that lady, and she's up, like, uh, up the rocks somewhere shooting on us. I yeah, so she's going to be from where you are, Chal. Um, mm -hmm. You've got let's let's kind of recap where we are, right? So to your far left, you can see DT is exchanging fire with um, uh, a, a woman behind a set of rocks that's long distance from you. Uh, medium distance to you, you can see the marshal who uh, has run a, across the canyon and has. Um, taken a very effective shot against uh, the Gand who's headed towards a cave and you can see the cave um, where he is. Rix is right beside you. So Rix hasn't moved. He's just been, he took a shot at the Gand as well. Um, and then off to your right long distance away you can see um, that Titus uh, is standing on his bike and he's ex uh, was exchanging fire with the Gand as well. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's help DT. I uh, I would like to use two maneuvers to get to short range. That should be possible. I'm not sure uh, you, from honest. where you are, it would only it would only I'm willing to give one maneuver for you to get to where DT is. Okay, and DT is on short distance. So okay, I will use one maneuver to get to short distance. I will pay two strain to aim with my uh, no, I, to aim with my break grenade to try to throw it uh, behind the cover of lady just just to smoke her out basically so right now you're at long 
uh, one maneuver is going to get you medium, another maneuver is going to get you short. So you take the two strain and you're going to try to throw the stun grenade. Alright, so let's go ahead and set that difficulty. And I should have a boost from the previous uh, catching my breath. Excellent. Alright, so I've got one difficulty die, one setback from her cover, one boost die. Let's see if Chal has figured out... Well, we know DT can't throw a grenade from uh, session one. <laughs> Let's see how Chal does with grenades. The uh, pool is ready if you want to give him a roll. And let's use light side point. Let's do this. Great. I, really want to I will up, I've upgraded your roll as well. So we're now it's uh, five light, two dark. And I have a lower degree it's by one. And these, the, these guys are obviously not, uh, you know, neutral is in the pub so we can do some mess so <laughs> very nice <laughs> well. so um this is gonna be my first time with a grenade uh let alone a stun grenade so let's take a look at what exactly this means this uh, this second. is not a stun since i ran out of them and it's more <laughs> okay. it's a flag unfortunately is it possible chal thought he was Charles was thought he was throwing a stun grenade and then saw what happened. <laughs> yeah, well, we ran out of stun grenade, though. So. And this is, you know, these are evil people. I was not sure in the pub. They should have attacked us earlier while we still had stun grenades. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> exactly. Really Their mistake. All right, so let's take a look at our... So it's actually a frag grenade that we threw. Let's so see what a frag I grenade... I think... From what I remember, so if there should be any blasts or anything, I would need to trigger them with advantages. So I think this should be straight up like, uh, like if, if I hit her with a with a gun, but we can just describe it more interestingly exactly. how the um, how the so it has it, it has blast six, so it does six damage to anything that's engaged with her. Um, if you had two advantages uh, to spend, yeah. which you don't, and, and there's nothing engaged with her. But it does eight base damage, um, so that's going to be eight plus the four, so that's going to be twelve to her. So she is in a much similar situation as her gand friend. So you throw the grenade, unbelievable accuracy, just past it. The frag gr uh, grenade blasts off. She is thrown back against the rocks. She falls down to her knees. She is still upright, but this this was no bueno. Um, so if she is um, still conscious and still upright, it appears that um, she may not be that way for long. And there's basically me standing next to TT and the dirt raining on our shoulders as we hear like just just the explosion uh, behind the rocks. So I want to flash just real quick to Titus. So Titus, you you really now really the first time you've seen this crew uh, do what they want. And you didn't see the grenade go, but you have seen what a grenade can do and just the plume of the sand and dust that comes from that far rock. I want to know what Titus thinks about what's happening right now. Howdy friends, Greg here. Nothing makes Malifaux easier than having the right tools. Here at the third floor, we love all the licensed Malifaux goodies from Custom Meeple. Not only are they helping support this podcast, they sell custom-made weird licensed tokens and terrain. They sell it all. Crew boxes, terrain, markers, tokens, and even a 3x3 three three full Malifaux board. Custom Meeple sells a complete M3E token set covering every marker and token you need to play. Custom Meeple are the source for the official accessories for Malifaux. Everything is designed by hand and authorized by Weird Games. Check them out at custommeeple.com, that's with one M, or follow the link in the show notes. Up your Malifaux game and be sure to tell them Craig from the third floor sent you. If you use the promo code third floor friend, all one word, T H I R D F L O O R F R I E N D, you'll get a 5% discount and help support the podcast. It's valid on everything except retail products and playmats. All right, so Titus is now thinking inside his head. Really, what have I got myself into? That crazy damn Rodian. Better be successful at this. That thing better be dead. Because our position is definitely given up now. <laughs> All right. That's so not a go stealth to... grenade. Come on. 
<laughs> All right, so we are now at uh, turn two. So the NPC is going to be our lady friend. So she is going to take one maneuver to stand. Her second maneuver, she is also now headed towards the cave. Um, but because she is not able to, uh, she's only able to do a maneuver to get there, she is essentially going to be um, at where the first set of rocks are, but she is in full view of you, Titus, and in full view of every, of um, uh, everybody else that was behind the other set of rocks. So she's completely exposed. She's running with her rifle, but she is definitely beelining it to where the gand is. Um, so now we've got one more PC slot before... Uh, another NPC gets to go, and it's wide open because we're at a fresh turn. Uh, Titus would not be upset with taking a shot. Yeah, this is Mandalorian-style work. All right. Uh, Titus is now going to uh, turn his attention towards uh, the woman now running and make a um, another aimed uh, shot at her. Uh, this one will be a stun. This will be a stun. So you're going to be short distance... You've got a boost um, from the aim, only one difficulty die, and we're ready for you to take a roll. So you're gonna hit her, um, and this is going to take her down. So I'd like you to describe what happens. All right, so as she kind of uh, descends from the area with the, the rocks and grenades exploding, etc., cetera, she uh, kind of starts to make a, a beeline, um, kind of looking both ways, knowing that she's really exposing herself and uh, Titus, t- turning his attention from the Rodian and the grenade, immediately whips around, uh, you know, aiming the rifle uh, quickly and uh, with uh, surprising finesse, given, um, you know, his, his armor, um, and lines up the, the perfect shot in motion that just blasts her right in the back. Yeah, and she goes down, so you can see the stun uh, uh, just completely cover the body. She uh, falls forward flat on her uh, flat on her stomach. She is out. Uh, Her rifle um, is at her hand, but not in her hand anymore. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that first NPC slot, um, seeing the other one is now gone. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, real real quick. Uh, Titus then says over the comm link, uh, "I've got one down for questioning." You can eliminate the rest. <laughs> so you, uh, you've you got two advantages um, after that shot, Titus. Um, how do we want to use that? You could clear both of your strain if you'd like. He is going to clear both of those strains. All right, so you can go ahead and zero that out. And for this next NPC slot, the only thing that you guys can see, and, and the only one who really can't see this happening is Titus because of the angle where you are, but everybody else can see the Gand has now disappeared into the cave itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take us out of structured time. I was about to let him know that I'm taking my blaster off stun. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our situation. We've got back at, back um, in the rocks is um, uh, Rix and Jacek. Jacek is not and is just still cowering behind. Um, Rix, you're, you're there standing at the rocks. Um, you've seen all of this unfold a little bit farther up the canyon itself we've got uh dt and chal um uh, standing there you guys have seen uh what titus has done titus you've seen what you've done and uh our um our gand has vanished into the cave itself um so we're now out of structured time so tell me what happens uh titus uh swings his bike over uh towards the the fallen body of um the the female assailant and uh he says on the comm link uh to the rest i'm going to scoop her up where'd the gan go anybody got eyes he's in a hole here i'm uh i'll advance slowly do we need to smoke him out do i hear we need to smoke somebody out of some hole I was just going to say, if you've got more of that firepower that you're just going to lob around, you certainly can try. I mean... But we may want to enter ourselves. Okay, so, going your direction, guys. All right, give me one second. So, Titus, you're the first one to reach this woman. Um, a human woman, you would say uh, probably uh, early 30s. Um, and uh, she is in... You know, typical outer rim smuggler type gear. Uh, you see, uh, uh, she definitely has a pistol on her hip. She's also got the rifle in her hands herself, um, and uh, she's not 
by any means dead, but she is definitely knocked out at this point, so she's unconscious. And uh, I- uh, Titus will uh, dismount from the the bike um, and uh, take her, uh, the woman's weapons, um, store them on the back of the. Um, well, first examine them and then. Uh, store them on the back of the bike. Um, uh, pretty unremarkable blaster pistols, as a blaster pistol and blaster rifle. Um, and you have, uh, there's a pouch on the back of the bike, so you can kind of lodge them both in there, and they're held. The other thing that you can see too, um, Titus, is you kind of look into the cave. You can no longer, you can see that this isn't just a hole. That this is obviously a cave, and you can see deep enough into it to see that it's kind of winding away. You don't see the gand at this point. Um, so he's gone deeper in, into this cave um, than where he's visible now. Um, I lift um, the the woman up a bit and uh, just kind of lean her against the bike um, and stand with uh, the rifle drawn, um, kind of watching... Uh, staying on high alert and just uh, uh, ask everybody else to uh, congregate here. So, Marshall, you've arrived. Yep, and the Marshall's arrived at this point. Um, so, Marshall, you're right there at the rocks. You can see Titus le- kind of leaning leaning the woman up. All right. Um, I don't know that I have anything that can help, uh, help her condition. Well, you, be can, like a, like you a, can always do a medicine check, right? Um, so even though you might not have go. a medical kit or anything like that, it Got can it. be just as simple Got as, it. you know, putting some pressure on something or whatnot. So if you want to go run to her right now, we can definitely do a medicine check. I was looking for a heel check, but... <laughs> <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong system. system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, will, uh, I will crouch down next to her and, and uh, over my shoulder, down the cave entrance, I'm going to gonna shout to this guy, the Gand, there's an easy way to do this and a hard way. The window for the way is closing fast. And then I'm kneeling down next to uh, next to her. And um, looks like I'm uh, coming up with nothing, huh? Yeah, so because she's over threshold, it's going to be a, a hard check, which is going to be three purples. Uh, your medicine is two green. Uh, you have no ranks in it. Um, so everything ends up washing out. Um, what I can do for you, Marshall, is even though you're not able to bring her back, right? You're not able to to make her feel better. What you are able to do, just looking looking over, is she's not a risk of dying. So if you could, if you left her there, she's not going to die of her wounds. She might die of exposure, or, you know, die of, to the elements. But there's nothing nothing mortal has happened to her. She's definitely out because of of the stunning themselves. I do want to get a sense of what Chal and DT are doing now. Uh, DT is probably looking at Shawl and pointing to his shoulder, showing him on his shoulder where the bad gun touched him. (laughs) (laughs) It's important information. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay, let's... uh, let's Maybe you hadn't noticed. I don't know what pain is, but it would hurt right here. (laughs) Okay, so I should install that subroutine later, right? (laughs) <laughs> so let me see what you got there. So I will try to like do some uh, basic uh, basic repairs that I could do in the field for the sake yep. of uh, the discussion, I guess, mechanic. Right. Yeah, so you've got some tools. Um, it's going to be a mechanics check. He is just over half his threshold, so it's going to make it an average check, so it's going to be two difficulty. Um, and I'm actually going to give you a boost. I'm not going to do this every time, but I am going to give you a boost because uh, this is not the first time that you have been working on this particular set of uh, metals and screws. Um, so uh, the difficult pool is ready. Just do a mechanics. Okay, so oh, I've done this before, right? The- <laughs> all right so uh after all rolls you ended up with a failure but you did get four advantages so you're not able to do any real repair work it's going to take some more time and attention on your part uh Charles, as you're kind of looking things over um we've got four advantages and right now what you can do is you can use three of those to clear out dt's um strain yeah sure let's go hunt and then uh, do you have any strain? You do. You can take another advantage to clear out your strain. Uh, drop by one. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. 
Beautiful. Uh, so last but not least, I want to talk and find out what Ricks and Jacek are doing. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I lean over to Ricks, or lean over to Jacek, and uh, kind of help bring him back up and let him know that, that we're out of immediate danger and ask him, uh, uh, how's he feeling? Uh, uh, did you get hit? Uh, uh, is everything okay? I, I'm, in the last 24 hours, I've seen things I've never seen before. You guys are dangerous. I'm glad I'm on your side. Well, all right, Jacek. Uh, well, uh, let, let's join the rest of our crew, um, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll gather with the rest of the group. So, Ricks, are you going to... Um, so right now, um, uh, you've got everybody kind of conjugating around around the mouth of that cave itself. Um, are you going to do the same thing as the marshal and kind of cross that, that canyon? Um, are you hopping back into the speeder? Give me an idea. When you say join them, I want to get a sense of how we're going to do that. Uh, I guess how far away are they uh, to the mouth of that canyon, uh, of that cave? The, can- the canyon itself, they're a short distance away. Um, so, you know, it would be, uh, if we were in structure time, it would be a single maneuver to cross, cross the canyon itself. Gotcha. Well, let's, uh, let's bring our speeder back over um, uh, and uh, meet them at the uh, mouth of that cave. Um, I've also got some scanner goggles. I'd like to see if I can see anything inside that cave, uh, if that's worthwhile. Definitely worthwhile. So you you help Jacek back into the uh, speeder itself, the one that was not blasted away, um, and you're able to just very quickly you know bring the speeder around, um, and you're kind of with the rest of the group there. You pull the goggles down and you take a look, and just give me one second for a perception check. All right, I've got the pool ready. It's gonna be an average. There's no setbacks because of the goggles. So two successes and a threat. Um, let's go ahead and add one uh, strain for that threat. So up your strain by one for me, if you would. And for the two successes, um, there's a couple bits of information. One, you can see that the cave itself goes back a good 10, 15 feet before it um, kind of turns to the left. Um, you're not able, obviously, to see what's happening after that turn, but it's obvious to you that it, this is a... a cave tunnel right as opposed to uh, uh you know the cave itself ending it definitely wraps around um the other thing um that i'm going to allow you to see is that the cave doesn't appear to be fully naturally formed um it's possible that it started that way um but you can see that it has been uh widened um and by 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 something um, whether it be hands, tools, or whatever, it's not. It's difficult to say, but you can tell this is this is a cave that's not a, a fully naturally formed cave. So, guys, we are right at two hours, and I think that um, this might be a good logical place to stop. So, let's kind of recap where we are. We've got a, a strange woman that took um, took a couple pot shots and did some nice damage to DT. She is uh, unconscious, leaning against the rock, and she is unarmed. You guys are gathered around at the mouth of this cave where a Gand, um, who was also shooting at you, has now escaped through. Ricks can tell um, that uh, this is a cave tunnel um, that continues on, and Jacek is sitting in the speeder itself. Any other last housekeeping or anything we want to do before we close out? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, Titus wants to, um, on, on the woman, um, just check to see if she has any kind of, like, light stick or flashlight something, some kind of light source if they were heading into a cave, um, considering I don't think too many of us except maybe the droid have a source of light. Um, and this is going to be a no-brainer for you. Um, that's a perfect example of what we can use a light side for, and there's no downside <laughs> to you doing it. So you use the light Let's side. Yeah, you use the light side, and yes. So you look on there, and you see she's got a glow stick, um, which you could use um, uh, as 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 a, uh, a flashlight. So yeah, go ahead and uh, in your items, um, uh, Titus, uh, in your inventory tab, uh, under the items, just put a, a glow stick there. All right, so let's first talk um, experience, and we're going to do it a little bit differently. I kind of uh, did experience based off of kind of MVPs. I still want to do the MVP piece, but um, this was a pretty short encounter, but a successful one so far. So I'd like, um, let's see, everybody gets base five. 
Um, and again, I'll do all the uh, uh, housekeeping on this on your sheets. Um, did who we ended get up taking the woman out? As well, by the way. What's that? Did we get the uh, five XP last time? Yeah. I like you did. If you look yeah. on your sheet, yeah. If you look on your sheet, you should be able to see uh, the unused. So let me make sure I updated it. Hold on, I may not have updated it. Yeah, <clears throat> I was gonna say mine only says five as well. So right From... now, uh, Chal, you have a total of three unused. Um, so this will put you at five, six, seven, eight unused. Um, and the I'm last not, time we I got have... the five, since I'm on three. Yeah, but inside. if I remember correctly, you, did you not use that five? Because I wanted to use ten to upgrade something else, and I didn't have enough. I would. I scrolled through the chat and I didn't find it spending there. But. Yeah, I I only have five available. Uh, I don't think we actually did XP at the end of last the last session. Oh, uh, so I've got you with five unused total. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't use. You haven't spent uh, any. Five okay, as well. All right, so let's go. Let's yeah, go. I've ahead. not spent any since we started. Got it. All right, so that's going to be plus ten for everybody. And then who took out? Uh, who was the final shot on the woman? That was Titus. That was Titus. All right, so Titus, you're actually going to get plus 13 total. So that's going to be five from the session two, plus five from this one. So everybody has got an additional 10, which I will put into your offline character sheets as well as your roll 20. Um, I would like to know, um, and anybody can just speak up, whose episode was this? Who do you think, who is our star today? Boy, I think Titus was in the... Uh... <laughs> In, in the van the entire time <laughs> on yeah. point. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it, it, it was a good showing for the whole crew working together, but yes. Titus was definitely the spear point. Yeah, I, I would uh, vote for uh, DT, at least as far as uh, of sharing it, as far as t uh, Titus and uh, DT on point and the pincer maneuver, I think, uh, really paid multiple dividends for us. Yeah, we definitely showcased uh, some of the uh, combat abilities um, of you guys, and I think that we see that DT and, and uh, um, Titus are going to be uh, pretty important when it comes to combat. Um, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to Rex. Uh, one... Uh, he kind of saved the day right at the very beginning by stabilizing uh, that speeder and preventing that yeah, from no being kidding. a much <laughs> better situation. That, that maneuver was cool yeah, as hell. It was very <laughs> cool, cool as hell. And uh, was able to uh, contribute to the downing of the woman. Um, of course, great, so Joe we'll... would, not, would not admit it that somebody helped him, and it was all his skill <laughs> that you know made us land safely with it. so this, the, the question right. for chal is is that he may not admit it but in chal's head does he know rick saved his butt or have you rationalized yeah, it far he, enough for sure he, he knows, knows. <laughs> yeah. doesn't admit at all <laughs> just oh, so that's... it's known uh, rick's is also aware that i'm not getting credit from chal as well so yeah. he's not <laughs> appreciating my contributions so all right, guys. So last but not least, let's check for obligation for next session. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a roll. Come on, Oath. All right. <laughs> so uh, well, we rolled good. 100, which means that – or all zeros, which means that nobody has any obligation uh, for next time. So anything over 75 or uh, zeros right now doesn't hit anybody on the table. So DT, you get a little bit uh, more wiggle room <laughs> finally uh, on your strain threshold. So let's pop that back up to 12. Um, and, wait, wait, uh, it's not actually it's not actually 10 forever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like it should be, doesn't it? So we're going to have our first, uh, I think, obligation-free session next session. All right, so uh, we can go ahead and uh, stop the recording. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch so you don't miss uh, the avalanche of content we create. Links are in the show notes. Be sure to check out our shop on thirdfloorwars.com for the latest in gaming apparel and gear. There you'll also find the latest information for the U.S. Faux Tour. Find out where you rank in your conference or even in the entire United States. Get those models built, painted, and ready so we can see you at the next U.S. Faux Tour Masters event. Please take a moment to write a review of this pod on your favorite platform. Rating and reviewing helps us find more listeners almost as cool as you are. Be sure to share this feed with all of your friends who love tabletop gaming. Thanks for listening. Howdy folks, Craig here. Now, if you love gadgets as much as we do, you're going to love the new Third Floor Wars Gadget Bundle from Schooner Labs. 
Branded with the logo of your favorite podcast, it comes with two measuring multi-tools, a compass stepper for those tight and important movements, along with a compact dashboard to track your turn, strat, and scheme scoring along with your soul stones and pass tokens. It is the perfect bundle for anyone who plays Malifaux or just wants to look cool while doing it. The link is in the show notes. Check them out and help support your favorite gaming podcast.